Well, I'm not too familiar on how, what the protection is on a wolf. I guess we have to figure out a way to keep them down, but still live with them. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but. In my dream, I was down in the valley part there in a ceremony. And that's actually where my name came from. These wolves, they were all white, white wolves. You can't tell me that these biologists are gonna manage those wolves from their desk, you know? These wolves are just running wild out there. You have to eradicate them, you know, just get rid of them. Usually according to the government guy, if you find some scat, if it's got bone chips and stuff in it, that's a wolf. They can crush the bones that the coyotes and stuff don't, can't even crush. I'm a wildlife biologist for the Blackfeet tribe. I've worked here for a little over 22 years now. Wolf management has fallen into my responsibility. I was dragging the carcass and, and what was left of it. The wolf was on the kill. He was growling and snapping his teeth at me and his eyes were evil. We're hunting wolves, either to, to get a radio collar on them or for management purposes. It wasn't an everyday thing like it is now. The science behind the wolf stuff is golden compared to any other wildlife population. Really. It's, it's phenomenal the amount of money and effort and detail that we and what we know about wolves in the Northern Rocky Mountains. There's a, there's a good comparison of, from a native's view of way that what's, what's actually happening with the wolf because we can relate to it through our own history and experiences. They did the same thing to the wolf as what they did to the Indian. The wolf has been part of the daily life of our tribe for eons and eons. The gray wolf was first sighted down in that area. And the Indian people, they were friendly with nature. That mountain become gray wolf. There's good in them and there's bad in them. We use them in our ceremonies and we pray to them, the spirits. general public, if they want to go out and, and look at the little wolves, well, let them look at them in the picture, you know. I believe in protecting your property. And I believe that if they infringe upon my territory, I am a territorialist, that they were, are running a risk and danger. But I'm not going to go in their environment and hunt them. It's not reasonable. Oh yeah, if there's something in the area or they hear of a, a kill, they kind of, we all kind of let each other know what's going on and, you know. Um, We're all in it together. Yeah. I believe the dilemma today stems back to the pseudoscience or the arrogance of a field of science that claims or extends the notion that it can understand and it can control the nuances of nature. If you see one, shoot it. If you kill every one you see, there'll be another one coming to take its place. If they have good management, they can control them. But if they don't, then there's no control. A little bit of everything around here. You have to figure out a way of managing them without killing them to where they're not staying in one place and killing everything that's there. It's important we reflect on that relationship between the tribal people of America and the wolf, how that relationship continues today. Anytime you get something that's stronger than man, they tend to be more fearful. There's a higher power, I believe, that also has some controls that the human being in the Western world doesn't recognize, as native people do. just moved so I, I think we're we're real close we're within 
50 yards or less.